Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Yali Madad. Thank you for joining today. In today's presentation, inshallah, I will attempt to discuss the purpose of education in Islam and some of the most important skills needed to prepare for the future, referencing Maulana Hazrimam's speeches. Let me begin with an incident which happened during the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam. Once Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wa sallam entered a mosque, it was a time before prayer, uh, and there were two groups in the mosque. One group was engaged in prayer, in worship, and the other group was engaged in learning and discussion. They were uh, learning how to read and write uh, and dis discussing the teachings of Islam and their applications in their daily lives. Looking at both, the Prophet ﷺ said, they are both engaged in useful pursuits, but I am a teacher. I shall join the group assembled to learn. And so he sat with the group of students. In the Muslim world, learning and seeking knowledge is considered the duty of every man and woman. The Prophet has said in his hadith, the seeking of knowledge is a duty of every Muslim man and woman. Hence, since the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it is an obligation on every Muslim man and woman to seek knowledge and its continuous search in order to understand Allah's creation. No honor is like knowledge, is a well-known teaching of Hazrat Ali ﷺ. During the Abbasid time, Bayt al-Hikmah, that is the house of wisdom, was established where various Roman, Greek and other philosophical works were translated and discussed. The Al-Azhar University and the Dar al-Ilm in Cairo were the most important learning centers during the time of Fatimids. So the role of intellect is central in Islam. Acquiring knowledge is crucial and essential. So the question is, what do you do with the acquired knowledge? How do you use it? Education in Islam has a purpose. Let me quote two different excerpts over here. One excerpt is from the speech of Maulana Hazri Imam during the foundation stone laying ceremony of the Aga Khan Academy, Dhaka, Bangladesh, 2008. And the other is an excerpt from the vision of the Aga Khan Academy, which is the vision of Hazri Imam. So in 2008, Maulana Hazri Imam in his speech said, world and faith are inseparable in Islam. Faith and learning are also profoundly interconnected. The Holy Quran sees the discovery of knowledge as a spiritual responsibility, enabling us to better understand and more ably serve God's creation. Our traditional teachings remind us of our individual obligation to seek knowledge unto the ends of the earth and of our social obligation to honor and nurture the full potential of every human life. Now let me quote the excerpt from the vision of the Aga Khan Academies. Education must also make the case 
for a pluralistic tradition in which other views, ethnicities, religions and perspectives are valued, not only because that is just and good, but also because pluralism is the climate best suited for creativity, curiosity and inquiry to thrive. It must also stimulate students to consider a variety of perspectives on some of the fundamental questions posed by the human condition. What is truth? What is reality? And what are my duties to my fellow men, to my country and to God? At the same time, education must reinforce the foundations of identity in such a way as to reinvigorate and strengthen them so that they can withstand the shock of change. So one of the essential and key objectives of education is to inspire learners to reflect, to stimulate curiosity, creativity, and to engage in some of the fundamental questions. The Holy Quran emphasis to reflect on the signs of Allah. It urges to use the divine gift of intellect to ponder on Allah's creation and through reflecting, understand Allah's creation and to serve it. In the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in Surah 45, verse 13, Allah says, And He has subjected to you what is in the heavens and what is in the earth, all together from Him. Surely, in that are signs for a people who reflect. As we contemplate the signs of Allah, we go through this process of inquiry and curiosity and that process helps us to understand His creation better. The Aga Khan Development Network Ethical Framework under the Ethic of Education and Research states, Scientific research was considered as a meritorious duty. It was the response of the faithful to the persistent call of the Quran to ponder creation in order to understand God's greatness. You must have heard the story of Prophet Ibrahim salam. He lived in a society where the sun, moon and stars were worshipped. He reflected on these different natural objects around him. He questioned it and sought answers. His deep contemplation and reflection on these questions, his inquiry led him to the truth. As we reflect on Allah's creation, we experience a sense of wonder and awe and we become more mindful of Allah. Maulana Hazri Imam, during the inaugural ceremony of the delegation of the Ismaili Imamat in Ottawa on 6th December 2008, in his speech said, As we use our intellect to gain new knowledge about creation, we come to see even more profoundly the depth and breadth of its mysteries. We explore unknown regions beneath the seas and in outer space. We reach back over hundreds of millions of years in time. Extraordinary fossilized geological specimens seize our imagination. Palm leaves amethyst flowers, hedgehog quartz, sea lilies, chrysanthemum, and a rich panoply of shells. Indeed, these wonders are found beneath the very soil on which we tread in every corner of the world. 
and they connect us with far distant epochs and environments. And the more we discover, the more we know. The more we penetrate just below the surface of our normal lives, the more our imagination staggers. Just think, for example, what might lie below the surfaces of celestial bodies all across the far-flung reaches of our universe. What we feel, even as we learn, is an ever-renewed sense of wonder. Indeed, a powerful sense of awe and of divine inspiration. Reflecting on nature, indeed, brings us closer to understanding Allah's creation. Alongside gaining new knowledge, the appropriate use of this knowledge is imperative. It is absolutely necessary to have an ethical lens to use knowledge for the betterment of others. The ethical dimensions of life play a key role to become major contributors of society. Let us listen to what Molana Hazri Imam has to say about this ethical realm at the University of Alberta's graduation ceremony in 2019. When a construction company cheats on the quality of materials for a school or a bridge, when a teacher skims on classwork in order to sell his time privately, when a doctor recommends a drug because of incentives from a pharmaceutical company, when a bank loan is skewed by kickbacks, or a student paper is plagiarized from the internet, when the norms of fairness and decency are violated in any way, then the foundations of society are undermined. And the damage is felt most immediately in the most vulnerable societies where fraud is often neither reported nor corrected, but simply accepted as an inevitable condition of life. Again, Universities are among the institutions which can respond most effectively to such threats. It seems to me to be the responsibility of educators everywhere to help develop ethically literate people who can reason morally whenever they analyze and resolve problems, who see the world through the lens of ethics, who can articulate their moral reasoning clearly, and even in a world of cultural and religious diversity, and have the courage to make tough choices. And it is clear that the quality of ethical leadership throughout society can in great measure be shaped by our educational institutions. Maulana Hazrimam emphasizes the responsibility as learners to morally analyze the knowledge we use to advance societies. Implementing an ethical framework requires in-depth reflection, laborious discussions, and compassion. And it is our duty to undertake these tasks. This brings us to the question as to what skills are required for our learners to succeed in their lives, to become the stewards of Allah's creation, so that they have the skills to serve Allah's creation. Maulana Hazri Imam, during the foundation stone laying ceremony of the residential campus Aga Khan Academy, Mombasa, in 2007, in his speech said, We must rise above the antiquated approaches of earlier days and instead infuse our students with what I would call three A's of modern learning. The spirit of anticipation, the spirit of adaptation, and the spirit of adventure. Let us ponder on these three A's which Maulana Hazri Imam has referred to. 
The first A is the spirit of anticipation. Anticipation is to foresee and to prepare for something that might happen in the future. It involves predicting the outcomes and potential impact of our today's actions. As the world moves forward, the current generation faces uncertainty and the anticipation skills provide them with tools to thrive in their lives. When the future is governed by anticipation, it helps to prepare for the future interests. For example, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals provides the blueprint for the future of the planet and people. The OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, has launched the Future of Education and Skills 2030 project. In its position paper, it states that anticipation mobilizes cognitive skills, such as analytical or critical thinking, to foresee what may be needed in the future or how actions taken today might have consequences for the future. Both reflection and anticipation are precursors to responsible actions. One of the examples, as we all know, is the pressing need to combat climate change. And the anticipation skills indeed could help our learners to develop awareness on this critical issue and to take actions today for a better future. Having talked about the spirit of anticipation, let us move on to the second A, which is the spirit of adaptation. We live in a world where change is constant. And in this looming change, skills to adapt is vital and essential. As the world continually evolves, one of the most important skills which is essential under the spirit of adaptation is lifelong learning. With the ever-changing world and unpredictable future, we constantly need to renew our skills adapt to new technologies. Lifelong learning skills prepares us to adapt in this ever-changing world and to become resilient. During the foundation ceremony of the Aga Khan University's Graduate School of Media and Communications in Nairobi, Maulana Hazrimam in 2011 in his speech said, the most important thing we can learn or teach at any school in a world of perpetual change is the ability to go on learning. As the world gets smaller, not only adapting to the technological changes, but learning to collaborate, to engage with diverse people, to wear a pluralistic lens and to see diversity as an opportunity is indispensable. And people are not born with pluralism skills. It is something to be learned. During the convocation ceremony of the Aga Khan University, Pakistan in 2006, Maulana Hazrimam in his speech said, The spirit of the knowledge society is the spirit of pluralism, a readiness to accept the other, indeed to learn from him, to see difference as an opportunity rather than a threat. Such a spirit must be rooted, I believe, in a sense of humility before the divine, realizing that none of us have all the answers and respecting the broad variety of God's creation and the diversity of the human family. This brings us to the last A mentioned by Maulana Hazrimam, that is the spirit of adventure. 
adventure literally is something that might involve something unknown something challenging it is taking calculated risk and stepping out of one's comfort zone engaging in the spirit of adventure equips our learners with confidence and with important life skills adventure involves taking risks and in that process one might face failure and that teaches us to be resilient and face problems with courage it broadens one's vision develops wider perspectives and helps to make meaningful contributions in the world the spirit of adventure indeed gives an opportunity to challenge oneself and to expand one's potential let me summarize what i talked today so today in this presentation i talked about the purpose of education in islam which is to learn about allah's creation and to acquire skills to serve allah's creation at the forefront of this learning is our responsibility to be oriented by ethical standards to serve humanity and to be contributing members to make this world a better place the three a's of modern learning mentioned by maulana hazri imam are the spirit of anticipation the spirit of adaptation and the spirit of adventure let me end this presentation with an excerpt from maulana hazri imam from the inaugural ceremony of the diamond jubilee july 11th 2017 ours is an intellectual tradition which permeates the pursuit of knowledge that is to be used for the good of larger society live your faith through acquiring knowledge with which to help others thank you yali madad